Welcome to the Beacon Podcast. Deborah Jane East and Ari Kopel are voices in the wilderness for positive change and a better future. Thank you for listening. And now, here are your hosts. Hello, everyone. It's me again, Deborah Jane East, and this is the Beacon Podcast. This is part two of our series on the dark side of humanity, exposing child trafficking networks. I do want to inform the audience that this is mature content because it's a dark subject, but it needs to be talked about. My co-host is Ari Koppel, a best-selling author and research extraordinaire. I am so glad to be working with you, Ari, because you really uncover some great research, and some of this stuff is not easy, but are you ready to go this evening? I sure am, Deborah, and thank you so much also for being a beacon, okay, in this darkness. I really appreciate, uh, you know, you having me as a co-host as well. Well, we need it because, you know, God never leaves us without hope. There is a good side. You know, if you work together for God, there are things that will come out and will turn these things into a blessing. And I know that we're going to be talking about uh, some of those blessings that are coming up here. But I want to give a quick little update because I always like to mention something if it was uh, from a previous show. One update, because we talked about this, scientists have created a liquid metal robot just like in the Terminator. God. For real? Right. And also Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was, of course, the Terminator, he says, well, it looks like this movie is really true, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Gee, <laughs> did we did we predict that? We mm-hmm. knew that this was um, like a, a eye into the sky, a look into the future. So yep. uh, that was just really freaky because, you know, we're finding these things out and The other thing about artificial intelligence is related to our topic tonight, and I want to mention it because some of you parents may have already had this happen to your teen, and this was about a 15-year-old male. He posted a picture of himself posing in the gym, lifting weights. It was just a picture from the waist up with him, you know, flexing his muscles like you know, a lot of a lot of kids do. They're proud of being healthy and fit. Well, someone took AI, they took that picture, and they changed it and made it nude from the waist down to blackmail him. Oh, my God. Now, that surprised oh. me. I never thought it would be used that way. Did you even imagine mm-hmm. that? No, no. This is like a first. But there's a first for everything here. Yeah. Right. And so I think about the self-esteem of this young man mm-hmm. and the fear, you know, because even he knew it wasn't true. His friends would not know that it wasn't true. He would have been laughed at, bullied, joked about. And and that's what they plan on. They want you to be humiliated so that you'll give them money. But eventually they they put it out there anyhow. So those were just two little updates. But Wow. We we have an exciting show tonight with a lot of information, and you heard us on the last show talk about the sound of freedom, and Ari was lucky enough to be able to see that, so I want her to talk about her reaction to the movie, the audience's reaction, and all the things that came out from that movie that inspired you for us to make change. Sure, sure. You haven't had a chance to see it yet, I'm assuming, correct? No, not yet. Okay, okay. Um, I just came from the theater maybe a couple of hours ago. Um, I'm kind of very um, saddened, you know. It, it's almost like um, mourning. I'm, I'm like in, in, in a state of mourning. Um because it's so um, real, you know, and a, a lot of times, you know, we hear about cases of children disappearing. A lot of people can intellectualize the fact that trafficking is happening and then child trafficking also. Uh, organ harvesting is happening. And adrenochrome production is happening. But it's like when you see it um, from the perspective of, you know, a story told, 
um, th where their main character is the rescuer and then the little girl that's being rescued and the, all the things that this little girl is going through and all the things that these rescuers had to do, especially specifically the character of Tim Ballard, which is played by Jim Caviezel. Um, it just brings it home. It makes it more real. Uh, I really, really hope that everyone gets a chance to see this movie. Uh, to give all of this information that we're hearing here and there, and you know, different uh, you know news uh, outlets, alternative news outlets, and whatnot, to give it a, a perspective, right? That that it's real. This is not just conspiracy theory and um one of the things that um you know you get from this movie is that that sadness that that pain that that the the father goes through you know knowing that his children were taken um that not knowing where the child is you know because one of the children two of them were taken and one of the children is returned by by tim ballard's heroics okay so the little boy is returned but you know i don't want to go into the movie uh you know in, in uh, you know all the details because i really want you all to go see it but that excruciating anguish that that parent goes through and then even tim ballard's anguish in 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 knowing that he has his own children and that possibility that his children can also be you know on the other side of the coin where they could have been abducted as to what mo motivates him to go to go forward and, and and even go into rescuing a child in the jungle this is the most incredible thing i have ever seen and so you come out of there um morning I, I i was in grief because i'm thinking my gosh you know this little child was lucky but how many of them don't make it right. you know how many of them they're just forgotten and you know people just give up on them so i wanted to talk a little bit about you know bringing this um this a little bit more into reality of you know statistics right because i know tim ballard is really really good about bringing these statistics in front of us um so that we can understand the gravity of it so this is a lot of the information that i'm going to share real quick is based on information that he's given so if you are if you are not aware who tim ballard is uh or his work um, I strongly suggest everybody to go into the um, Operation Underground Railroad uh, website, which is, I believe, our rescue, and that's O U R rescue.org, and, and take a look at all his work. But um, he states that there's about 800,000 to a million children that disappear every year. Um, and I am honestly not 100% sure if it's in the U.S. or if this is worldwide, but it's a lot of children. Um, and he's stating that one uh, disappears every 30 to 40 seconds. So that means that, you know, it could be in your own neighborhood. It could happen in your own town, in your own city. I mean, it's happening a lot, very frequently. Um, and that he's stating, too, that the trafficking business overall, whether it's for, uh, in, you know, enslavement for labor enslavement or sex slavery or whatever it might be, all of it combined, it's a $154 billion industry, Deb. Can you believe that? Wow. I mean, that is That's horrible. Huge. It's huge. So, you know, a lot of people um, who are in the wrong side of the law who don't have a consciousness who tend to be of a criminal element maybe they were in jail and you know how jails are releasing people you know they i mean right. the, the the government is just letting go of uh prisoners for a reason right uh, these people you know may not have skills and may not have jobs but boy is this lucrative right they they now can not only just sell drugs you know but oh gosh this is even more lucrative right because you can uh take a child did you know that you know just so you know um a child prostitute will command three times the amount that an adult 
prostitute does. Oh gosh, that's awful. Yeah, and and they will uh, sometimes, uh, you know, traffic that child and 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 put him under prostitution and and abuse and whatnot several times in a night. It could be anywhere between three and ten times a night that child's getting raped and abused and sodomized and everything else. So the child is, you know, to have children, it's it's the like the next high in terms of sexual gratification for these sick people. Um, they're stating that uh, the U.S. is the number one consumer of digital pornography, of digital, you know, material for child sex pornography and that type of thing. Um, and that this country is number three three okay with the consumption for uh of children in other words consumption of children in terms of pedophilia uh so the united states is is a major major uh reason you know why a lot of the the, the especially the open border is is you we're seeing so many children disappearing into the united states and what's happening to them is that big question mark we don't know um and then there's a 5% increase in child pornography material consumption. You know, I mean, 5,000%. So what's happening is there is a lot of demand for, for children. And what, when that happens, there's a lot of demand. When there's a huge demand, well, we've got to supply, right? We've got to find the supply because that's how we're going to make money. So now that it just attracts and lures all these perpetrators again coming out of the prisons and and just new new fresh uh entrepreneurs that want to be in that type of lucrative business so the predators then are everywhere they are lurking everywhere they could look like anybody every walk of life doctors lawyers teachers and it's not just uh, the 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 perpetrators, but the actual end users, right? They can be anybody too, right? So, we have a major problem in our hands. Did you know that in May there were like twenty seven children that went missing in Cleveland? Did you did you hear about that? That was in the news. Yes. That was a big thing. Yes, I heard about it, but I didn't hear any follow up. Do you know what happened? You know, I didn't hear a follow up either. And I don't know why, but Deborah, 27 children, it's almost like a whole classroom disappeared. It is. You know, and it's like, you know, what about the parents? I mean, what are they thinking? Well, what's the law doing? And I'd like to follow up on that. I mean, I haven't really delved into, you know, doing more research about the outcome. You know, if any of them have been identified, if any of them have been rescued, but that's very concerning. Uh, and that was just there. Um, then, the, you know, I don't know when the other ones, I think it was all within either between late 2022 or the beginning of 2023, all the way to May. There were 10 in Colorado that went missing, 17 in Michigan, 17 in Texas. And and I mean, it, this is just in the U.S. So let's not talk about worldwide, right? Because we know we, there's major trafficking going on. Right. In South and America, these, Middle America. And, and these third world countries, mm -hmm. it's very acceptable to do uh, child brides and correct all kinds of stuff. Yep. Yep. So what's happening, of course, it, it's obviously we know it's business. It, it's a very, uh, you know, uh, a business that that is uh, very corrupt. Uh, it used to be in the dark web. Right. Um, but now it's kind of like more. I don't know. It seems to be more in the open. It, it, it's almost like there's no shame, you know, because they're making pedophilia, uh, you know, normal. They're adding it to the LBGTQ plus plus one, two, three, X, Y, Z, whatever it may be. So that's an, an uh, you know, it's what is it? Minor attracted is what minor, it's called. Minor attracted persons. Right. Right. So it's, you know, hey, it's not pedophilia, you know, it, you know, I'm just, you know, I just happen to be attracted to children. No big deal. It's just another part of the spectrum. You They're know? trying to take away the stigma to it. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if 
you know, if the uh, LBGTQ, whatever, whatever, I don't even know what the order of the thing is, um, community is 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 entitled to their rights and you know that type of thing um then so are we right so are and we. we should be right so are we because we are you know we're just minor attractive people well no big deal um so that's how they do that you know they start um conditioning people they start inoculating people to except little bits of things that were probably very uncomfortable to even talk about. They were taboos, you know, but, you know, hey, we're accepting this other group of people. You know, it's understandable, you know, people should have their rights. They should be entitled to love who they want to love, right? And that's makes sense, right? I mean, after all, Jesus talks about love and talks about, you know, um, loving thy neighbor and that type of thing. Why wouldn't, you know, this be also part of it? Why wouldn't a pedophile receive that same type of thing? The only difference is that, of course, um, uh, the, the, the gay, lesbian, bisexual, whatever community um, tend to, I guess, be with people that are of a consenting age, you know, they're consenting adults, I'm assuming. Right. right? So pedophilia, though, is not. And then did you did you hear about the Netherlands that they're stating that pedophilia is OK because, um, you know, a child can give their consent if they're uh, if they're consenting to ice cream. If they consent to having ice cream and what flavor of ice cream, then it's OK. They can consent to sex as well. Did, did you hear oh, that? Oh, my gosh. No, I didn't. That's disgusting. I know. I know. Well, this is how. This is how they're inoculating people. They're making this whole thing that was very, you know, taboo in our society. They're making it normal and normal and normal. So, And the thing about it is politicians are making laws or passing laws that make this easier for the pedophiles to have access to the children. Yeah. You know, like allowing, I know there was a case last year of rape, um, a girl was in the bathroom and this was a male that was uh, transitioning, but he used it to rape females and they huh. passed, they passed it so that he had a right to go into the bathroom with the girls, but it was a tactic yep. and the school knew about it and they did not tell people they covered, tried to cover up this rape. Yeah, that that is absolutely, you know, and, and so the schools are, you know, at fault, right? Um, you know, I was looking at um, that, I, I believe a video that you shared with me um, with that supposedly pedophile uh, that went into a school pretending to be the father of Oh, one God, of the was that not awful? Oh, my goodness. So I strongly suggest people I, and, 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 you know, to look at it. But Deborah, if you can post it. You know, and the beat can uh, podcast. It is. Page. It's okay, already perfect. posted. Perfect. It's already posted. So you know what got me really upset? I, I was upset at the, at the perpetrator, right? But I was upset at the police officers, even though they were being very gentle with him and trying to, mm -hmm. pu you know, pull information out and everything. But the parents were obviously extremely, you know, stressed out, right? right. And the 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 police was like no we can't do anything well what are you going to do about it what are you going to do about it this is my child oh but he hasn't done anything yet you know um you know that oh my gosh if i was if i was in their shoes i would have been i would have probably had to have been handcuffed to be honest with you it was surprising and the perpetrator's name was duran reed yes and um when they first you know i really got annoyed too at the uh, police officer. The way they the were beginning. handling. Yeah. Right. But it turns out at the end, he was able to get the truth out of him. He got she, a, com he got a confession. He got the confession. Yeah. And he was, he also found out he wanted to get as many charges against him as he could, because this guy who did not look like a, like a pedophile did he? I know. No, not at all. He was nice looking. and mm -hmm. But he acted like he was psychologically impaired. He talked slow. Yep. He lied. He said, 
oh, he he really was going to a hospital. He gave mm -hmm. a lot of excuses, didn't he? Oh, yeah. And he was uh, into drugs and then he couldn't name the drugs. He named the cocaine. He couldn't name the, t the type of pills he was taking. So, you know, he couldn't uh, the lies. He, he couldn't keep up with them. And so that was kind of his demise as well. But um, but, you know, the, I guess the point that I'm trying to um, to bring up here is that, you know, a lot of our institutions, uh, our law enforcement, a lot of them are to blame. Uh, for, you know, allowing these perpetrators to get off easy um, and really sometimes not even believing or not 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 siding with the parents, you know, and, and it so. It seems like sometimes they're protecting the pedophile. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. At, at least it, it seems that way. Um, so, you know, we really need to do more. Um, as a society to prevent this. I think our children are extremely vulnerable, um, you know, and they really don't know any better, but the parents, you know, for example, I think we may have touched upon, upon this maybe last time. I don't know, but, you know, l letting your child go on errands by themselves. No, that's a don't, you know, that's just common sense folks. I mean, my goodness, uh, y you're just asking, for that child to get abducted. And, and remember, we are talking about an industry that is booming. It, it's, it's, it's creating uh, the sickness. The, the industry itself is creating the sickness. Why? Because it's attracting people that already have uh, some kind of addiction, probably. Right. It, it's probably what drugs and then what's, drugs. what's next? Drugs, porn, you know, maybe porn. just. The very bizarre type, sec, you know, sexual addictions, right, practices and whatnot. And sometimes, you know, again, um, because it's an addiction, you know, they, they need to get that next high and the next whatever, the next kick, whatever that might be. And porn may not do it anymore. So they right. go for children. And, and they also, they forget Duran Reed, who is the pedophile that went to the school. Yeah. He had planned this for months. He walked in like he was a parent. He started asking questions, talking to teachers until he figured out who was going to be his target. It was a five-year-old girl. Wow. Five-year-old girl. And he picked up papers like, you know, he was going to fill them out to try to get her address. And it turns out that he didn't just wander there by mistake. He had planned it. He went online. He found all the schools that were having these open house events and targeted. And the thing about it that just really shook me to the core, one of the things he told the police officer, he had planned on drugging the child with a starburst and then taking her so she would, you know, go and not create a, you know, a, a commotion by screaming yeah. <laughs> a commotion yep. yeah mm -hmm. and he was going to drug a starburst well in the trunk they found a baggie with a starburst in it and it turns out he had done this before he had kidnapped a couple of little children before he had done this so there you have a 20 something year old man a five-year-old innocent child mm -hmm. that's what they're up against is someone who is cunning deceptive i mean the person that duran was at the beginning of the of the arrest and the one at the very end were two different people mm -hmm. i mean he tried to attack them at the um, police station he was very violent he was very upset but he was cunning enough to try to act stupid so he could get out of it yeah well you know this should show people that you know the willingness and the ability, you know, or also what these uh, perpetrators are capable of doing, because he had no problem walking into a school that has teachers in there, parents on right. a parent teacher day or night or whatever that was. It was a uh, it was during the daytime for ice cream, uh, a get together to get to meet the parents uh, with, 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 you know, around an ice cream event. He had, it, it's not like he was snatching some little kid that was walking randomly by himself. He went into the school. So they have no shame. 
no shame and to get what they want they'll yep. do whatever it takes and this is a true predator this is what a predator would, will do i mean and i always give the analogy of you know you wouldn't let your child or even you you know yourself go into the middle of a jungle whether it's the amazon it's in the middle of uh, africa it doesn't matter you just wouldn't walk without you know being cautious without being vigilant in the middle of the field where you know you're going to have predators like lions and hyenas and 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 the uh, cobras and whatever whatever wild animal is out there because you're in their turf right you're in their right. turf so more than likely they're going to stalk you out they're going to hunt you down they're waiting for that right opportunity where they can just come and and snatch you it's right now unfortunately society has become so dark that our streets are just like a jungle and you might be living in a beautiful suburb you know maybe um i don't know somewhere rural i don't know they're everywhere that's what i'm trying to you know hopefully you know give the message out so that everybody's aware that society has gotten to the point where nothing is really safe so unfortunately we have to change our behavior so that we are perpetually vigilant whether I mean, parents, it's yeah par parents have to keep their radar out i mean do you know that a lot of pedophiles will stalk out playgrounds and parks Correct. they'll take snapshots of a child they'll learn their habits they will learn things about them, like listen to conversations. Oh, that child likes a puppy, so I'll bring a puppy next time I come. They, the fantasy is part of the sexual satisfaction. Yep. They post those pictures. They have fantasies about them until they get into a fever pitch. I mean, they research their subjects. They find mm -hmm. out where they live at. That's right. But That's right. And and they'll also go where to Walmart. Walmart oh, is yeah. becoming a big playground for pedophiles. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've heard stories about horrors. I've uh, heard about strange men following women with children, saying, "Oh, I'll buy your child some clothes. I've got gift cards." And it turns out one man did that, and he ended up abducting her um, nine-year-old child. And she was vulnerable. She was a low-income mom. Her kids needed clothes. And so she listened to him. She thought, oh, what a kind man. Unbelievable. No, you never, you never trust a stranger around your kids. Yeah. You can't no. even trust them, the kids in your front yard because they'll just oh, for real? pull up in the car and grab them. Oh, no, it gets worse. This is worse. I, I, I don't know if you've seen videos now. Folks, remember, now, we're not just talking conspiracy theories here the, the some of the things that we've come across has been because we've actually done research and we've actually seen video footage so have you seen the one deborah where i think i don't know if it's in the united states it doesn't really matter but uh you know it, it's just i'm trying to see if the you know the cafe because it looks like something like you would eat outdoors maybe in cheesecake factory you know sometimes they have the indoor seating and then you have oh, the yeah. outdoors right well this i think it was the mom and i don't know another person i don't know if the other person might have been a grandma or a friend i don't know but right next to it is a, a little girl i don't know if she was in a high chair or in a chair i don't know because what we're focusing on is you know the camera for from the restaurant is showing people just eating outdoors. There's a little, uh, like a little uh, bar or fence or something separating that little outdoor dining area from the sidewalk. And this guy just jumps that and runs towards the child and grabs her. Okay, oh. so there is a stranger, right? Right, it just, maybe they parked their car, saw the child, what a great opportunity. My gosh, everybody's distracted. They ha they're having lunch. They're talking. He just jumps the barrier and goes and grabs the child. And now the lady next to her or the mom also grabs the guy. And then one of the, I don't know if it was a waiter or one of the hosts there. I'm not sure. But he went ahead and tackled the guy. And so now the the guys on the the perpetrators on the floor and they were, they're trying to yank the little the child away from them. I oh, mean, no. what I'm trying to get at, folks, is that this is happening. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter where. 
it doesn't matter if you're sitting down socially with, you know, just having dinner with friends and your child happens to be there on a high chair, you know, they're sitting in the, in, in the high chair, they're sitting next to you. Maybe you're holding them, you know, in your arms, you're just walking with them. You're just holding their hand, whatever. They're getting so emboldened that they're just coming up and yanking them and running. And it only takes 15 seconds. Just a couple of seconds. Being turned away for them to be gone with your child. It's horrible. They they have footage like that in um, Sound of Freedom as well. They have the the beginning of the movie. They have uh, footage showing just little kids randomly with people. And a guy just jumps out of a car, snatches the kid and puts it in the car and they're off. Or they'll put them on a motorcycle. I mean... This is what this is why I, I'm saying that we're getting to be very similar to a jungle, where now the predator is not no longer the lion or the bear or whatever. It's people. Um, well, per- you know, many per- kids, per- men. many kids, they're just going to get on their school bus. Stephen Stainer, who was a there was a movie about that. My name is Stephen. He was snatched on his way to get on a bus, and the perpetrator acted like he was a pastor and he was looking for his dog or a pet of some kind. Well, he kidnapped Stephen, got him in the car. And as soon as he got him away, he said, I'm going to be your father. Now your parents didn't want you. They used psychological mind Mm -hmm. control on these kids. And so you think about that. What might they tell your child? To oh, exactly. make them make them give up hope. I mean, I can't imagine having to go and, through something like that. Oh no, exactly. And and sometimes, you know, you've heard of Stockholm syndrome, correct? Right. Okay. So some of these children, you know, they're abused and all kinds of things while being captives. And this could be on going on for years because the child may not ever be found. If they're found, this one happened to have been, right? But Sometimes they they have maybe an opportunity to escape and they may not because they they have a bond now with their captors because of the Stockholm syndrome. They they it's almost like uh, the captor will say, well, you know what, Um, if you behave today and give me what I want, I'll feed you. If you give me what I want, I am not going to hurt you. I'm not going to beat you. And so you you start building a a relationship with that person based on the fact that they're not going to hurt you if you're good. So therefore, you know, Hey, you know what? The door's open. I'm not leaving because you know what? They've, they've treated me good. They didn't beat me. Right. You know, well, you know, thing. I'm glad you brought that up. I know I discussed a little bit of this case with you the other day, but it has had a, a bizarre, bizarre twist. Do you remember me speaking about a 25 year old uh, young man named Rudy Farias and he had been missing for eight years, and they found him at a church. He was passed out. Mm-hmm. They took him to a hospital, and he didn't speak. He had horrible injuries. He had scars, and it was evident that he had been abused a lot. And um, so he had been reported missing by his mother. He went out to walk a dog and never returned. And so for eight years, the police got some leads you know they would say oh he was seen here and there but they never found him so i was thinking well whoever kidnapped him got tired of him and so they dumped him back out well this is what they're saying now happened and it will shock you to the core Uh oh this young man was at the hospital you know they were attending to him giving him liquids and you know tending his wounds and everything Whenever his mother was in there, he wouldn't say a word. So they invited an advocate to come there uh, along with some other family members. And he immediately started talking. And this is what he said. His mother had kept him captive all those years, had gave him drugs, sexually abused him, and told him that if he called the police that they would put her in jail and put him in jail. And wait, 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 I'm shocked. What? She was the one who abducted her child. Oh my God. She kept him as a sexual slave. She gave him drugs to keep him in stupor for years. She locked him in their house. 
But after she had the mind control and he had the Stockholm syndrome, she would get jobs and take him to the job and make him do the work and her get paid for it. Oh, my God. She she never let him out of her sight. She did things like that. So after several years, she felt like she could trust him. So she started letting him go out with her to more and more places. And he was horrified. Mm -mm. He was horrified because he knew that she was, you know, encroaching on his personal boundaries and he hated it. But it was his mother. He didn't want her to go to jail or prison. He thought he would go to prison because she kept on saying, you're going to go to prison. They'll lock you up. They'll lock me up. This is incredible. I mean, you can't. It's like every day I hear something different and it it's almost like the evil it morphs. It's morphing. Yes. You know, and you just can't keep up with how, you know, this the, the, the people's minds are just you know, warped. De- they're warped. They're, they're becoming degraded. I don't know what the word is. I, I, I am just so shocked. It was and so it, horrific that the the male advocate was telling the story. He was crying. He was a grown man in his forties. Oh. He kept on saying, "I can't believe a mother would put her child through this." I know. He said, "I'm just in shock." He was he was crying tears, but thank thank goodness that that young man found his voice. He had oh, been yeah. held captive all those years to this sick, psychotic mother. And you know, he's probably never going to get well mentally. He's probably well, not. I mentally mean, and emotionally, he's probably the poor kid. I mean, I, I just, he's not a kid, but I mean, holy cow. Uh, wow. He's lost his innocence. I mean. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. And his mother, you know, she's, you know, completely psychotic. She's got her own mental issues, but Mm -hmm. she would make him pretend in the bedroom to be someone else. Oh my God. She gave him another name. She convinced him that he had to have a fake name. So this is something I would have never thought about. Mm, Horrible, horrible. And, And that's what they do when they traffic these kids and then they sell them obviously for sex and whatnot. Uh, they give him different names, different yeah. names, like the little boy, he, um, his name, they changed his name uh, from Miguel. I believe his name was Miguel to Teddy Bear. Oh. So he was a cute little teddy bear. Um, and, you know, of course, all these little kids suffer tremendously because a lot of them are sodomized and brutalized and all kinds of things. They don't recover. Did you know on uh, other statistics that a lot of this, these children don't don't live uh and you know more than two to four years uh after being captives and 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 trafficked and stuff like that because of uh you know not only possibly dying uh while being uh sexually brutalized and 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 assaulted uh but a lot of you know their bodies get sick they they just give up their their bodies give you know they just they get stds Mm -hmm. and they're not treated correct yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 and not only that, but then of course, you know, once they're done with them, assuming they live past that point, uh, then they're, uh, you know, used for adrenochrome production. If, if, you know, again, multiple different purposes, right. A child can have multiple purposes, not just sex trafficking. So once they're done with them, they could, uh, you know, maybe go into the, uh, adrenochrome portion of the business, or they can go into, uh, the organ harvesting portion of it, which is probably the end of the child at that point. Right. So that's, that's very concerning. Um, especially know that if they're, usually don't make it past two to four years after they get into a situation like that. Um, if you don't find a child that has gone missing within that time frame, then it's possible that they may not be alive anymore, right. which makes it very, very sad. And these young girls that are raped, you know, they rape babies. Oh yeah. They oh have raped three month old babies. Mm-hmm. A lot of these babies and young toddlers, they will never be able to have children. They are extensively damaged on the inside. They are raped in every orifice they have on their body. I don't think they live, Deborah. They I don't, don't see how, how they can even live to even. Well, and then there's the snuff films and the Satanists. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? 
do you know that um, I really wanted to get into that like heavily, heavily? Um, do we have time? Yes, we do. We do. Okay. One of the reasons, uh, you know, that children are gone missing that are abducted is because uh, they're uh, taken for rituals, right? The satanic ritual. Um, it's a business as well. Um, if if you're, we're talking about their world countries like, um, you know, Haiti and Africa and some other ones out there that uh, either a village or uh, a family or a person that needs certain things uh, accomplished in their lives that they need have needs that need to be you know uh, realized they will go to a witch doctor and um, and ask them what what can they do to you know either bring them prosperity or uh, you know what is it that I uh, I can do to win this election you know that's a, a big one and it doesn't even have to be a third world country it could be here in the United States or Brazil, or it could be, you know, another country. It doesn't have to be third world, world uh, type of country. But they'll go to um, the warlock, witch doctor, Satanist, whatever, and say, hey, I want this done. And so the witch doctor will say, okay, uh, what we need you to do is we need to sacrifice a child to be able to do this. Um, and so they, this individual will pay the witch doctor very well because they they get paid very well so it's another aspect of the business uh and then the witch doctor will have that child um or a child doesn't you know not a particular child in mind but it could be any child um they will have them um abducted they will uh take the child it could be in you know the, the sacrifice could be done in a in the, in the forest it could be done on a slab it could be done in a sanctuary wherever and they will um, take the child and usually if it's a boy, they will cut off his genitals. Uh, they will cut off pieces of the child. Uh, of course, you know, organs removed and uh, the, the blood is drank, you know, um, it, they create a paste uh, or some kind of concoction out of the pieces that are removed, including the head. They, they remove the head. So the child is then sacrificed and... Um, so supposedly that's going to bring that individual or that family what they need. Sometimes a family will go to a witch doctor and ask for whatever they need to be done. What is it that needs to be done? And the witch doctor will say, I need you to sacrifice your child. And so they will sacrifice their own child. Why? Because it supposedly has more power. If they're willing to give up something that they love, that they gave birth to, right? Um, supposedly, the the magic to make it happen is more powerful. Oh my gosh! So they go ahead and sacrifice their own kids. I mean, this is like sick. It's but very th sick. But this is not just third world countries, though. This is happening, you know, in the United States too. Because why sacrificing a child, being the purest thing there is to God, or the closest thing there is to God, um, allows all these families or people that want to become powerful, they, they, you know, it gives them the power, it gives them control. It gives them, you know, so-called um, uh, beauty and success and everything that comes with it, all the riches and all the fame and everything. Right. Right. When, when you think about Hollywood, the Hollywood folks, um, you know, how, how do you think a lot of people that are not known get to be known and become famous so quickly? They they pretty much have to do that. They're indoctrinated. They're indoctrinated. They have to, uh, hey, you know, pretty much sell their soul to the devil. It's it's not just the saying. It, they really do. They they have to show allegiance to these satanic forces. And one of the things that they have to do, unfortunately, is sacrifice children. Eat, eat parts of the child, um, you know, the adrenochrome, which is addicting, you know, it, it keeps them um, with this perpetual youthful look, right? It, it's almost like, you know, you're taking in baby blood and, and you know, you know who does that? Um, let me know if you have seen that video or picture. Uh, have you seen Madonna going through transfusions? 
She does that a lot. Have you seen that? No, I haven't saw that. Okay, well, she apparently goes through uh, transfusions, and they're claiming, again, I have no way of knowing. I don't know Madonna. I know we share a birthday, but that's about it. <laughs> that's all we share. Um, she she apparently goes through uh, transfusions of ch ch children's blood or, or fresh, you know, child's blood, um, and that keeps her supposedly rejuvenated and healthy. Now she's in an supposedly has some kind of infection or something but um but that's a thing you know where they're taking uh they're getting transfusions uh they're taking in the ad adrenochrome uh, to get that special uh type of high that happens with that type of blood when it's um uh, you know coming from the adrenals because the child has been frightened to the point of right. you know yeah so yeah so this is the thing hollywood is famous for that but again it's not just obtaining the power gaining gaining power gaining uh, notoriety it's also maintaining it okay and that's the big thing right because yeah they get it but they can't get out of it once they obtain it oh yeah i'll just do it until i'm known right i'll just do it until hey i can have a couple of films under my belt and then i'll just let it go no they can't they can't let it go it's a lifelong thing you're in it you're it, it, you are pretty you pretty much sold your soul and hey they're not going to give it back to you and how do you think they get them to promote their causes they've got blackmail exactly they say oh you got to push the jab you got to do this things that they really don't want to do but they're enrolled and and not only that so part of the deal um is to recruit to oh yeah yeah so they have to recruit people into that into that way of thinking, into that um, satanic worship. And so how do they do it now? Well, they'll go in um, the halftime shows and they'll promote Satanism, right? All these symbols and, and things, all the, 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 blood Super, Bowl, the, the Super, Super Bowl, the Super Bowl, the, the CMAs, the um, uh, Academy Awards, whatever, you know, these major shows that are televised, and and it's 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 broadcasting this by the millions in everybody's living room, right? And and all of it is satanic ritual, uh, you know, symbology. Uh, nobody's getting up, turning off the TV. Most people aren't. So they're taking all that in visually, which is a big thing because then you know you're being brainwashed. And again, why are they? Why is this happening? Because we are inoculating and bringing down the tolerance for the things that we call taboo before right and these celebrities that have children they're bringing their own children into it exactly exactly and they're all going to be abused everybody has to be uh go through the rituals because we are they're they're basically you know this this creature because they're creatures they're not human anymore. Um, they're making sure that the next generation um, is capable of continuing it because, again, you got to praise, praise Satan, right? Praise, Satan is right. the new ruler. He, he's the ruler of this of this world. Um, according and look to at their outfits. They have horns yep. on. Yep. They have satanic symbols. They have flames. There was one person. I don't even know how to pronounce his name, but he had a a hit song with uh, Billy Ray Cyrus and he was a black performer and he, one of his videos, he's dressed as Satan. Oh, wow. Satan. And I won't even tell you the things, the innuendo in his video that he did. I mean, horrible stuff. Like you say, they're not hiding it anymore. They're not hiding it. They don't care. And uh, the, the more shocking, the better. Cause once you get over that shock, ah, it's just entertainment. It, it, what, what's the harm? You know, hey, that's Hollywood. They they love to shock, you know, like Lady Gaga, you know, she makes me gag, actually. Uh, she, they, they named her. She named herself very well, you know, Gaga. Right. You know? I but, agree. Right. She, uh, I've never seen anything like that. Uh, I mean, they have absolutely. I, I, I think even Britney Spears is, is, you know, gone down that path. I think they all have even uh, that. What's his uh, kid's name? Justin Bieber was, he started off as Christian and and now he's uh, also been seen, um, you know, with with the blood and babies and i think he even tweeted something i eat babies or i like eating babies i don't know i mean i'm just letting you know that it's it's out there they're putting it out there uh it's propaganda it's 
meant to inoculate people to accept the taboos and because hey it's just entertainment again we are allowing it by our silence we are giving consent to this so the whole point is to create a world that is a new world the new world order is a combination of things but it's more putting the head of all of it as the satan you know the satan figure satanic forces in place where that's who is going to be worshipped creating a new type of species um because now satan of course couldn't create humanity in its original blueprint god did that so it's creating a miscreation an aberration of of nature which is the uh ai transhumanist symbolic biology which is of course no longer the original uh, intention that God had. So right. now they're worshiping Satan now. Um, and they're doing it through all these practices, all these rituals. Uh, and of, and of it's so disturbing. It's yeah. disturbing because like Hollywood does, they want to make all of this the norm so that kids will say, oh, I want to look like that. Exactly. And, and they're singing these songs, mm -hmm. not realizing how bad the lyrics are. You know, they're, you know, parents let their children. Some of these female rappers have the worst language I've ever heard, worse than a sailor, about their body parts. And it's horrible. It's all part of the sexualization agenda. Exactly. The sexualization agenda is is done on purpose because what they're trying to do, this, this whole um, group of Satanists, because that's what they are. Uh, they're trying to um, push the, um, the the notion of creating appetites that have been taboo before. Okay, the thing I noticed about Hollywood is, yeah, their Satanism is right there for everybody to see. Some of them even just dress up like devils, and uh, it's right there in all of their routine uh, dance videos right there for everybody to see yeah and think of your little kids seeing this they're thinking oh that's normal it's normal it's in hollywood exactly yeah well you know i i, I really see it this way you know they the satanists are pushing the agenda so that people can accept you know, the, all the taboos, especially with the lower appetites, you know, uh, Christian people that are watching all these terrible, uh, you know, s symbols on the television that are not turning it off and not walking away. Uh, then again, we're accepting it uh, through our silence. And, um, you know, if we are uh, allowing it, then, hey, you know, if we see it uh, in a store, Right. If we see the, the T-shirts that have uh, an inverted pentagram or it has the picture of maybe uh, Satan or something, uh, it's it's more acceptable than maybe it was a couple of years ago. Just like now we see the rainbow right everywhere and the kids get to wear it for the LBGTQ, whatever it's called, um, letters. Uh, now it's acceptable in the stores. Not all parents are accepting it, but it's it's put in the stores hoping that there's a lot of open-minded liberal parents will accept it and buy for their kids. So maybe that's the way they're going as well. But the whole point is to open up those lower appetites. Uh, it's okay. Children, um, you know, can have sex at a lower age because, hey, they like ice cream. You know, that's happening again. Like I said, in the Netherlands, hey, it could happen here in the United States. All the laws are changing to favor the uh, minor the attracted uh, persons. So why wouldn't that, you know, have, you know, maybe even t-shirts like that i don't know it's just and they do that they use an unconscious agenda to promote their cause you know rainbows do you remember reading rainbows sure you know i, I used that. to love that because it encouraged reading and you know it was just a fun thing but but now they use that as symbolism for some other programs and so inadvertently they are getting their agenda advertised. A lot of kids, they want certain toys, you know, uh, Valencia, you know, which is a 
a fashion place that Kim Kardashian advertised oh, yeah, know, with their yeah. kids. They had little panda. Exactly. Panda toys that represented sadomasochism. And these and kids think, oh, that's cute. That's cute. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they're advertising sadomasochism without even realizing it. Yeah, that's the pandas. And I don't know if the audience is aware of the panda, what they represent. But those uh, black eyes with the panda, it, it's uh, many times when a child gets sodomized and brutalized like that uh, sexually, um, they're, the little the blood runs to the vessels in the eyes and it creates the bruises. Uh, so that's usually what, what that means. So it, a, a person uh, or a company that uses um, pandas uh, shows again that they're into kids. Uh, if you see a company with those little swirly uh, pizza uh, type of symbols, they're into children. If you see uh, when they use rabbits, in a picture, in, in one of those uh, photo shoots, it symbolizes adrenochrome. Um, it's the chemical, uh, uh, I guess, molecular way that the adrenochrome uh, is set up. It looks like a, a rabbit. So these are ways that they communicate with each other to let each other know, hey, I'm into this, I'm into that, um, you know, I'm into boys, I'm into girls, you know, that kind of thing. And that's how they communicate, I believe, Instagram um, has uh, their own sim- symbols. I guess you can put your own little av- or symbol next to your avatar as to what your preference is. So it's it's everywhere and it's everywhere now. Now I I think that we um, we are the majority, and we meaning the people that are not you know pedophiles and satanists. Even though there's a lot of them, you know we're we're talking about you know they're in the millions, but we're you know we're we're a lot more. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Okay, so we can do things, right, to prevent it. And my whole point is to have a way of teaching children to learn how to detect potential predators, uh, empower them. Hey, if I, you know, and I used to t- uh, take my kids to uh, to martial arts when they were very young too. But if a parent or a grandparent can help, and 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 you know, have their children learn martial arts, at least to learn how to kick, how to punch in the right places, you know, do things to help themselves get out of a situation. That would be a a, a lot more benefit than not. Uh, It's an investment in that child's, uh, you know, uh, security and their well-being. No different than an insurance policy is for, you know, if your home burns down or something, right? I mean, this right. is important. Uh, of course, not allowing that child to walk by themselves or to go on errands by themselves. And my strong, really strong pet peeve on, on, on all of this is that we all can be the parent or the grandparent or the guardian of any child that we see that could be in potential danger. I personally have followed children home where, you know, they could think I'm a perpetrator. Somebody were to report me, you know, hey, that woman looks suspicious. But actually, I was following them home because they were vulnerable. They were very young. They were carrying uh, groceries and whatnot. And, you know, they're not paying attention to their surroundings. There's parked cars everywhere. And you know what? I said, you know what? I am going, these kids are my kids today. I'm going to follow them home. And when they got to a certain point that they couldn't, carry those groceries anymore because they were very young usually from a different culture so parents i guess think differently from a different culture i don't know um i got out of the car and i went to them and i said do you guys need help where's your home and they would point to the home it's over there so i i took the groceries you know uh, the little girl took some i took them the rest of them and i walked home with them and i knocked on the door and the the mother i think she was egyptian she opened the door and I said, oh, I, I, I came with your children because they really needed help. And she brought me inside. She thanked me. Um, she, she was with a baby, so she couldn't go out. I think the baby was uh, sick. And so she couldn't go out um, to do groceries. And she sent the, the two kids to go, the younger one. The, the, oh, my god! Yeah, they were young. They were small, but they were all obviously older that they could do that. But um it's, this is in the middle of a really rough area in Nashville, Tennessee. 
And, you know, some parents aren't educated enough to understand exactly. how bad it is out there because maybe in their country they could do that. But I definitely agree with you. We need to teach these children definitions of tactics that adults will use, their traits. For instance, how would a child know that an adult is being out of bounds with them? Exactly. Teach them what a threat is. Mm -hmm. If an adult tells you, don't tell mommy that we do this or I'll get in trouble. Or if you tell someone I'll hurt you or I'll kill your brother, I'll kill your sister. That is a threat that immediately should tell that child, hey, this is not right. Yep. And explain to your child. This is how you tell that an adult has bad intentions. So they do this all the time. They'll also humiliate a child. They'll say, I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell mom that you made me do it, that you liked it. Uh, sometimes they'll get that child to join in with other kids and use that as blackmail. You'll get in trouble. They'll arrest you too. Whatever they need to do, they'll use that to heap guilt up on top of a, a child's head. And, and that is just horrible. Exactly. Yeah. Well, remember, too, that, you know, if they're not using that child for their own sexual purposes, then they're trafficking that child. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that child is a commodity. It, it's uh, it, it's uh, their, their own supply. It's their product. This is what they sell. Right. Um, so they're going to make sure that that uh, that child is kept, um, you know, uh, in fear so that they don't go out and, and they have to then, you know, lose that particular uh, ability to make money with it. Right. The manipulative mind of an adult is no match for an innocent little five year old girl. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. I have a, a, one more thing that I just wanted to um, give everybody a heads up because I didn't mention it last time. Uh, that I, you know, the first show we did. So it's really, really important, especially if you're a mom, an aunt, a sister, if you're an older sister, an older brother, whatever, um, you know, uh, grandparent, uh, keep an eye on your children uh, when they're on social media. If they can be away from social media, that's better. I know social media many times has become our, our, our babysitter right? It's how we get, you know, the kids entertained to leave us alone so we can do our own thing. But nowadays, is it, this is where one of the places where predators, they lurk, and they're there to, uh, m you know, s make friends with your child, pretend that they're another kid, pretend that they're a possible boyfriend or girlfriend. And the next thing you know, the child is being lured into a park, into a, a very uh, strange place for a meeting, and then you may not see that child again. So social media is a, a double-edged sword. Uh, and I strongly hope that um, all of the listeners are going to hopefully take things into their own hands where they're supervising this. Texting is another one. Right. And if you've watched To Catch a Predator, uh, you should let your child, your teenager, watch some of these shows. Mm -hmm. These these girls think that they're talking to someone their age, but it's a 50 or 60 year old man. Exactly. They can put up any picture. They can they can disguise themselves. They never are who they say they are. Oh, exactly. So. so Social media is like a fishbowl for pedophiles. Oh, it's horrible. But but another one, and this is the, the big one that I think, I have seen so many parents, and they do this because they're really naive. They're really not in tune with what we know, what most of the people, your listeners know. They're really like, on left field they have no clue they're clueless so they go ahead and post pictures of their newborn of their two-year-old of their parties and and the little friends and and all this goes up on facebook and it goes on twitter and instagram and everything and all it is is food for pedophiles exactly and you can fix your account to where nobody can download the videos of your child you can fix it like that good because i have a um daughter-in-law and she makes sure that no one can download these videos and you can do that and she's very very cautious about 
who she friends, you know. So there's ways that you can protect your children. But I, I know we're at the end of our time, but I did want to mention one thing, and this is to the parents. And I have to say this. Recently, there was a disturbing DUI arrest of a child rapist in his truck. He had six young boys and girls in his car, along with empty bottles of tequila. His name was Jeremy Guthrie. And the first thing the officer noticed, he was drunk, of course, from his driving. And when the officer said, who are these people in here with you? Who who are these kids? He said, oh, they're all my friends. They're 18. The officer said, that girl's not 18. She was actually 12 years old. Oh, gosh. Right. All of the kids were underage. And so when they arrested him for the DUI, they called the parents of the kids and everything. One of the grandmothers came there to pick up the child. And she said that this girl had had a miscarriage, that that this perpetrator had got her pregnant twice. She lost the babies. That he had been stalking her for a year. He had raped her repeatedly and was grooming her sister. And all of this was done over a year's time on Snapchat, WhatsApp. And even when he had got arrested before, he paid a guard to use the phone and tried to blackmail the little girl into getting money to send to him. Oh, so my geez. question, if the grandmother knew this, where were the parents? Why didn't the grandmother report this man? Exactly. You're supposed to protect your kids, grandmas, grandpas. You're supposed to do things, to report things. If she had a miscarriage, why didn't the authorities at the hospital, why didn't they do something? You know, we've got to take responsibility. We can't let these social programs be our babysitters for our kids. Yeah, we I can't. Agree. I agree. Uh, there are things that, that you parents can do, and we'll post all the links. There is a site um, for each state, uh, the sex offender registry. You can find out what sex offenders in your area, their name, where they live, and what they've done. There's also Save the Children, which is child trafficking awareness uh, that's good to get info and tips there's parental control apps i found out from a military friend of mine who was in search and rescue you can get your child a smartwatch that's not connected to any social media that it will give the location of your child like what if your child didn't come home from school what would you do you could look at this app and it would say, well, hey, my child is still on the school grounds or, hey, my child looks like they're at their friend's house. You could track down your child. They can also call you or 911 without getting connected to the Internet. So these are things that you can do to protect your child. And we'll put up all these links at the end of um, the show in the description box. You have given a lot of different scenarios where parents can step in and be the protector of their child. You know, don't let them run unattended in Walmart. And if someone pays extra attention to your child, don't take it as a compliment. Yep. There could be an agenda behind it. What I was going to say, I just remembered, was that if... You know, if we can step up, you know, as yes. citizens of the world and just make believe if you don't have children in your life, again, because you might be an empty nester or whatever, never had children. It doesn't matter if we can pretend that these children are all our children. And I mean it in, in, in a very, you know, benign and, and spiritual sense not the way that perhaps the biden regime uh comes right with that, uh, <laughs> yeah um if we can do that and and be vigilant and be willing to learn um how to detect uh if a child is being uh trafficked 
you know, how, how if a child is walking by themselves, how to prevent a possible abduction, watching, being vigilant for that child, being their guardian, even though you may not know them, just making sure that child is okay or getting them to the parent. Uh, if we can step up just doing that, okay, then I have a feeling the supply is going to be dwindled. And if we can dwindle the supply, then hopefully we can get a lot of these perpetrators off the street. And, and then the satanic spell that is over the world right now, hopefully can be broken. And, and that's what I'm hoping. It's up to us to do these things to help save our children. You know, their voice has went unheeded for a long time. And I like what Jim Caviezel said, God's children are not for sale. Oh, yes. And it is true. And it's up to us to do things to make this uh, not profitable, to be the eyes and ears for these kids. We have to do that. So we're going to have a continuation of this. It'll be part three. And one thing I want to talk about is I want to talk to the teenagers out there. What would you do if you were abducted to stay safe and increase your odds of surviving? Well, I have a young lady with a testimony and all the things that she did. And she was able to stay alive. And not only that, but to get her perpetrator arrested and sent to prison. So you never know when you might need some tips because you're terrified. These things will help you. So I do want to touch base on that. And I'm sure, Ari, you'll have some great information as well to speak about. Sure will. Fortunately. And and everybody, Ari has two best-selling books on Amazon. She will give you parents tools and stuff to be able to cope with these things, how to get your power back, how to cope with the stress and all the things that goes along with this topic. And the links for those will also be in the description box, but they're on Amazon. Now, what are the names of your books, Ari? Um, one of them is Getting Back to Source. And the other one is uh, spiritual warfare, the art of deception, and how uh, you know spirituality uh, unfortunately was hijacked. Uh, so yeah, please get them. Um, they are e extremely important tools to help everyone um, get back their power, stay connected with their creator, and uh, be able to navigate this world. Thanks everybody for listening. I know this was a dark topic, but it's a much needed one to change the narrative. If you're out there and you haven't seen The Sound of Freedom, go see it. Take your family to see it. Encourage others because I have seen some reactions to people seeing this. They're in tears. Grown men are in tears. This is what it takes to get the attention that we need to stop these horrific things happening to our kids. So everybody, please share this show. That's part of you being a voice. And uh, Ari, I look forward to doing part three. And we will see everyone in a couple of weeks. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Dipper Jane East and Ari Copel on the Beacon Podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to Rumble, BitChute, and YouTube to catch our next episode.